This is Alamancer, and it's been a little bit too long since we've seen our good friend the Pugloaf. So, uh, say hello. And actually, instead of talking about the Pugloaf, I want to talk about this little voodoo spy doll, which is hilarious. I've never seen it before. I want one now, though. That's really awesome. So, Walt Disney's Housewives, apparently he, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Walt Disney's Housewives, apparently he had more than one. Um, I did not know that. That wouldn't surprise me too much, though. Men of power, they do tend to, uh, they tend to remarry a lot, you know. Things just, you know, things just don't go very well in the home. But this is the Reddit Round Robin Mentoring Tournament. Nice shot there. Um, and that is going to mean that these were people who signed up and, you know, didn't, you know, they signed up as singles. They didn't necessarily get on a team. Um, which means that we are pretty much going to be watching folks who have been mentored, who have been, you know, helped out learning to play TF2, Highlander at least. Possibly some of their first time playing serious Highlander matches, and they are on Viaduct, which is King of the Hill. In case you don't know how that works, pretty much you just want to stand on that cap until it is yours, as the blue team's trying to do right now. Just one or two more little seconds there. There you go. They will now hold on to it, and Lisa here from Team Manshaft. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but no, Mannschaft in German actually just means like team, so that's, that's you know, team, team. Uh, no, they're standing out there on the point. Now, of course, if they hold on to the point, they pretty much just need to prevent their opponents from grabbing it. You did see the uh, the engineer there, who is lying on the floor dead, I think, who was trying to get a little bit of capture time, but that's not going to work very well. Now, we do see the blue medic is down, which means that uh, their Uber or crits or whatever it was is not going to be ready to go anytime soon. It looks like our red team here, that's uh, Team Equipe, is running the crits. So uh, once they have that up to 100%, they're probably going to jump in there, do some crazy damage. I would expect to see it go on the heavy. Um, it's a good choice in Highlander to use your heavy for a crits, unless you've got a really awesome demo man. And if you have the demo man being awesome, then I mean, you know, he'll be able to aim those stickies and just ruin people. Why is my headset like flopping around like a dead fish? It is making so much noise in my ear. I don't understand. Anyway, uh, actually, no, they, they might use the crits Krieg on the demo here. He looks like he's ready to take some uh, some crits. Launch the stickies. I want to see him do the damage, but he's got to call it out, and they haven't actually popped that crits yet. Oh, and he gets shot down. So uh, that's the thing about Highlander, especially on Viaduct like this. You really need to be very aggressive with crits. We've got uh, t oh N24 N24. Oh no, what's his name? 1024. Sorry, these guys have put the E's in their names at various spots for their tag. It's kind of cute, but. Uh, no, it looks like they were going for the kill on the med here, and Bird Asshat, the blue medic with the greatest name, um, he is ready to go with this crit, so they will recapture the point here pretty soon. I want to see them doing some, some serious damage here to their opponents, but so far nothing happening. And this, I swear to God, this microphone is just killing me. It's killing me. Um, e e Glan CB? EAG Lan? I don't know what EA. I don't, uh, I don't know how to. I'm supposed to be pronouncing this, but they've got a demo man here who's at 260 right now. As soon as they spot, you know, the enemy medic, it's really they need to do the damage right away. You know, just launch some crit stickies and blast their opponents into dust. Um, Bird is actually down to about 90 health right now, getting that regen going up, but he's got to be very careful about taking damage. Uh, he is actually pretty far back with the heavy, and you know, it looks like they might be trying to play. Oh, a bit of a. Uh, uh, Passive crit style, but that just doesn't work and you see right now red team came in with the crits And even though they didn't know where the medic was right away They still managed to kill the demo kill the, the heavy and they did all this before their opponents ever popped that crits The med actually died with the crits still in his hands Just got to use that got to deal the damage faster So it looks like our, our team equipe is probably gonna get that point back. We're gonna have Panpula Setting up, I would set up a mini sentry up there on that ridge, but who knows where he's going to put it. He's going to actually set it right here, covering the point directly. It's not a bad spot for it either. Um, and by not a bad, I mean probably better than anything I could ever come up with because I don't play engineer and these guys know what they're doing. So, you know. He is actually going to try to move the, uh, the mi yeah, the, sorry, it's a mini sentry. This is a dispenser, Salamancer. But he's moving that dispenser to a very normal spot. It does get taken out by the spy, though. The spy will set up a uh, sapper at least on the sentry, so... No more mini sentry for a little while here for our red team. That's going to make it easier for blue to maneuver around, take some flanks, push, uh, and oh, sounds like we did have a nice little backside going on there. So, oh, pyro, you got to be careful about that. So the pyro saved himself. He's down to 10 health by, um, oh, never mind, by blasting those stickies away, but he almost blasted them directly at his medic, which is a very scary thing to do. I want to see them pop in this crit. They need to do that right now, and they didn't. So, you know, spy comes in, gets the kill. Um, so how do you avoid that? That's a really good question. 
when you have a crits and you're kind of waiting for your opponents to show themselves so you can do the damage, how do you avoid getting backstabbed or getting uh, sniped or whatever? And the easiest way I can think of is that pretty much you need to not put yourself, and, and your pocket needs to not put you in situations where you're open for that kind of thing. It sounds like we do have crits going off once again. It's going to be the Demo Man dealing a bunch of damage. Look at all those kills in the kill feed. Um, but yeah, what we saw there was, you know, when that happened, when the spy came around and got the easy stab, it was because Blue only had, like, four people alive. Uh, the Medic and the Heavy were both looking straight forward, and there was nobody covering their flanks. So, of course, it's going to give an easy opportunity for people to jump in and destroy. So I, this round's getting a little bit closer. It's now down below a minute for Equipay, even though they have not had a very... Uh, they've not had very good luck holding on to the points so far for very long. It's getting down to the wire now, and if they can keep holding this point for a lot longer, I mean, they got to keep building the, uh, the crits, I'm sorry, as fast as possible. But once they do that, they should be able to hold this, I think, for quite a while. And there you go. Looks like uh, Team Equipay going to try and destroy Manshaft here as Manshaft wants to push forward, but actually they've got to deal with uh, Bum. Uh, at Spum, or whatever his name is, who, who does manage to finally get taken out there, but not before doing some good damage to the blue team. Kind of giving them a little bit of a run for their money. Blue coming in with crits right now, and they do immediately take down several players, including the med. That is going to be a big deal here. Uh, the spy going to come in and try to stop this, but he cannot kill that many players, especially when they are looking at him. So that is going to be a round for Team Mottenschafts. They have taken round one. I'm pretty sure this will be played uh, in the normal style, so whichever team gets to you know, three or four round wins first. We'll probably win the game. Uh, looks like we've got the whip being used. So this is this is standard Highlander for uh, for pretty much all the leagues now. Is there, There's just not a lot of weapons that are actually banned. And that whip is very, very useful for getting people out there very fast. Although, if you're whipping the pyro and all he does is kind of sit back, that's probably not who you should be whipping. Uh, they want to be putting that whip on like the sniper instead, because getting a sniper out there really fast or getting the demo out there really fast would be extremely important. That is a spy is now down. So, uh, you know, Pyro not doing his job there, but at least he spotted the guy and maybe communicated that to the rest of his team. Meanwhile, uh, Indivisive... In in what? Is uh, sneaking up behind the med and does get the shot off there with the Soda Popper. So that's looking pretty good right now here on the Reddit Round Robin tournament. And do remember, this is something that's put on by Reddit. If you want to be involved in this, you just have to go to reddit.com slash r slash tf2. And the next time you see a post about the uh, Round Robin coming up, Join in, because you, too, can have glorious moments just like this, destroying people with crit stickies everywhere, helping to your team to capture the point, just like Afan is doing right here for Equipay. Uh, but they're having a bit of trouble. Even though their opponents don't have a lot of players left alive, they still need to get in here and actually capture the point. Nobody's standing on it right now. The Spy, ready to jump in and go for the med, but he's not able to... Oh, he wasn't able to get the med, but his fellow sniper was me, the blue sniper did manage to take down that med, so that's going to be a big advantage here on the crits, assuming this spy doesn't do his duty to our blue team. So Team Mannschaft, I want to see them jumping in here with this crits. They can do it right now, and they will. They're being much more aggressive this round with the crits, so they're not waiting anymore for their opponents to uh, to die. Uh, not having on the easiest time killing that engineer, but he does finally go down after doing a lot of damage to Eaglan, actually. And you look at the the health right now and the, the side over on the teams. The medic is down. Nice shot here by Walt Disney's Housewives. Um, <laughs> this sounds like a great, you know, sitcom. I, that could be a really good sitcom. Like Walt Disney, you know, trying to maintain three or four different wives and, and not let them know about each other. But of course they all do. Uh, Walt Disney's Housewives. Actually, it sounds more like a soap opera at this point. I'm not sure I would watch that. Ugh. Anyway. Sounds like uh, more spy work happening, and there are ways to shut down spies most of the time, but if, if you don't have your pyro just kind of watching your flank constantly and you don't have everybody spy checking all the time, those spies can go huge, and they have been going huge. Let me take a look at our blue spy right now so we can find him. He does take the teleporter, so he's just back up now using the dead ringer. Uh, a lot of people actually have argued for banning a dead ringer, but look at this. This is a real problem that red team is having. They don't really have anybody assigned to that flank, so the spy just got in absolutely for free and uh, will now try to escape this pyro, which he does. Uh, he is still on fire, though, so he needs to kind of escape. Oh! He uses that revolver. He didn't even care if he lives through this. He just wanted to make sure he got the kill on the med, and he did. Probably able to use that dead ringer again. It is ready to go. Plus, his med is now using the crits, so I think that uh, Team Manshaft definitely going to have this round well in the bag. Uh, they do lose their med to a bushwhacker hit, though, from Walt Disney's Housewives. Nonetheless, they've gotten a lot of damage done. And, uh... 
pre-cast wig, the wig that I wear before every cast, is uh, just kind of tooling around, not really getting in a... G I didn't like his um, his positioning there during his own team's crits. He could have been using that to get significant positioning behind red team, but he didn't really want to. Uh, not using any hiding spots right now, so he will just kind of jump in and and there you go. Now is starting to think about like where are the teams actually going to come from. He did spot the med over there, not able to really do anything about it yet, but he is just kind of waiting for a health kit to come up. I think. There you go. Not a lot happening right now as Team Equipe actually jumping in with the crits, and they could do a significant amount of damage with this. So far, not a heck of a lot. It seems like a cr uh, a Caber went down on Afan, and uh, Pre Castwick did get the kill on Hugs. So. Ugh, killing hugs. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I do like me some hugs, but sometimes hugs actually are a problem. And did that? Wow, that heavy really should have spy checked. So Carl, um, kind of embarrassing there, bro. It's all right though. You will learn. Anyway, the yeah, about five seconds left here for blue team. Once they recapture the point, it's not going to be tough. And they are coming in with a critical rocket right now. Not able to do the damage though, Sir Ducky. Has a trouble with uh, rocket aim, I guess. And where is their med? Their med is down. Bird is the word if you're asking who is dead on blue team anyway. That's definitely the word. And Carl plus hugs. Apparently Carl really likes his hugs because he's coming in here doing some crazy damage. Panpula actually has a interestingly placed sentry up here, but the problem is uh, trying to trying to use that to shut down your opponents with a wrangler means you are going to get your head lopped off. Um, so the only question now is, will that sentry stay up? And I would be surprised if it did, but I guess we get to find out. I want to find the, um, uh, I want to find the, what is it? The sniper, but apparently we're not going to find him. My, my apologies. I'm pretty terrible about that. Now the crit's coming in once again from Team Equipe. It just finishes up now, and uh, they did not manage to kill the medic. So Bird Asshat going to jump right back in here with Eglan CB. Or not, because he just got sniped. So nice job. By the red sniper, he looks like he's, uh, he's pretty happy about that one. They're watching for that red spy, but he will get away for now. And red actually doing a really good job of evening this up once again. Uh, the blue pyro is standing up here along with the scout now. And this is where blue starts to say, okay, well, we really need to get this point to recapture. I don't know why we're not doing it yet, but the crits, I think, did just finish up a little while ago. Um, oh, no, 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 I, I'm sorry. It didn't because there was no crits because the medic was dead. Wow, so actually more overtime, but the medic heavy combo here could take this out very quickly. A good kill there on the pyro. The scout jumping around like a maniac. He does manage to get the soda popper up in time. He's going to be doing some damage. Not quite enough, though, as Team Equipe. Um, ooh, they've got a crits. They could hold on to this for a little bit longer if they've... I don't know. I, this is pretty exciting right now. A good rocket takes down two enemies. Not quite able to get enough kills yet, though, and the spy comes in for a beautiful stab. So uh, we could see Monshaft going up 2-0 to zero here in just a second if they can recapture that point quickly enough. They've got to deal with Carl, but they will blast him off using the Pyro. Very good use of the Air Blast for now. And there you go. That uh, brings him up 2-0 to zero in a very close round. Both of these rounds have been pretty close so far. So um, just so you guys know, this was actually played practically a week ago. By the time I cast it, it will be a week ago. Um, these were a Sunday ago on August... Uh, Fifth? I want to say it would be the fifth. So we're going to call it that. And if I'm wrong about the exact date, well, too bad. But uh, yeah, you know, like I said, go to Reddit. Reddit is kind of an easy source for a lot of various TF2 news, uh, both on our TF2 and our true TF2, T-R-U-E TF2, because uh, that, that subreddit is where a lot of competitive news and competitive discussions go on. So if you want to try to chime in and ask questions and, and you know read your uh, read your daily dose of competitive TF2 you know information. It's pretty good. Uh, Bird is thinking about trying to drag the rest of his team to kill that spy. He saw the spy decloak. I'm pretty sure he realizes it is a spy. But oh, a nice shot there. We're having a little bit of a frame drop issue. I think it might be my my computer's memory. That's not a good thing. But crits coming in now, and they don't even really need to use it. But it is a free crits um, just because their opponent is going to be respawning right now, and the crits are even. They actually could have held on to that a little bit longer, I think. But oh well, Afan wanting to get a lot of kills. And what is his points right now? He is way up there in terms of points. 42 at the moment. Uh, what's interesting is that the blue spy is actually outperforming his medic in points right now. Um, 1024 wants to get the kill on the sniper. And he does decloak now, so he's ready to get that. Good kill on me. And, and the more you can shut down the enemy sniper on Viaduct, the better off you are going to do. Because uh, those snipers are so overpowered if, if nobody touches them. 
Of course, you can say that about any class, but snipers especially, like, you really have to make a concerted effort to go after the sniper. If you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Both teams have the crits ready. Nice little shot there on the soldier who was jumping in after the blue med. Didn't manage to take him down. Uh, only question is, where is that sniper going to be now? Crits versus crits. Who's going to get the kill? It looks like the kill actually goes to red team. Equipe going to hold the point for a lot longer here. So congratulations to these guys so far. They are looking like they want to bring this around to a uh, closer game. Whoa. Microphone, what's going on here? Uh, Pan Pula, use, I, I like his play using this uh, Wrangled Mini Sentry. Um, able to just kind of sit down and hide a little bit whenever he needs to. Uh, Mini Sentry's now starting to fall a little bit, so he's probably not too happy about that. His toys are getting broken. I, oh, wow, okay. So this guy is decked out, too. He's got that uh, blueprint thing on its back. But the crits are not quite ready yet. Both medics, once again, having about the same level of uh, crits readiness. And building it up pretty soon here. I think Bird's going to have his, but they don't really have a, a... There you go. Just meeting up with the Demo Man now. So we probably got to watch that Demo Man cam here if we can find him. Can we find him is the question. Um, there you go. Eagland CB taking down Car right away. Takes down the bed. That's a huge kill. There's going to be no crits coming out of our blue team. Need to, oh, just need to finish off the teleporter here, and they do. The engineer nowhere around cannot save it, so he's going to have to rebuild that. It's not the best spot for a teleporter either, i got to say. Normally you see a teleporter going up, um, like, back around here, maybe? I don't know. There are better spots for it. Once again, these mini sentries coming up with that wrangler, and that's that's a really good move here, having the wrangler for the mini sentries. Um... He does kind of walk straight into a sticky bomb, which kind of sucks. But uh, Wrangled Mini Sentries are actually a really great way of dealing with snipers because you can just sit there and spam that Wrangler at them and the sniper cannot walk around the corner, can't really do any damage, unless he's using the Cozy Camper, of course. Uh, now the Spy, not called out. I think Bird actually could have just said, guys, the Spy just decloaked. Look, turn around, turn around. Um, and some of the best Highlander teams I have heard... Um, that, you know, say Hein, for instance, who I still need to get to cast a game with me, actually. He's an awesome dude. Uh, but Hein has said that, like, when somebody on his team calls out Spy, y nobody asks where. Nobody says, oh, where's the Spy? Like, who's the Spy? What, what does he look like? Everybody turns around as soon as the word Spy is called, which is a pretty good way to do it. The only thing I can think, you know, if, if everybody knows that, then, of course, they just have the Spy decloak right in front of the medic and have him turn around. You know, whatever. But, um... But in general, it's a very good idea to just, as soon as somebody calls Spy, everybody takes a quick look around. It's just spy checks real fast, and that is kind of how you do it in the Pro Leagues for Highlander. But of course, this is not the Pro Leagues. This is actually a lot of uh, very new players, as we've said before. Still, some relatively skilled players, and some people wanting to come in and show their stuff, so they are getting on here, at least on Sal TV. Hope they're happy with that that level of coverage, you know? It's, it's not quite vanilla or XTV. It's not pure stream. Good kill there by Warmo, though, on uh, in, in Divisive. I th I'm not sure if that was supposed to be Indecisive or if it's something else entirely, um, but a good name nonetheless. Accidents on the Pyro. Not doing a heck of a lot of reflecting right now, but there's really not a lot of spam coming in at them. And he is playing the normal Highlander mode for Pyro. There's, there's really kind of two schools of thought on, the, on Pyro. One of them, of course, is that you kind of need to be sticking around your medic, reflecting spam, keeping the medic alive, because that way you are... You're playing support. It's kind of a boring role, but you at least keep your team ready to push. And the uh, crits is almost ready now, so we are actually just going to watch what Accident does during this crits creep. But the other school of thought is that, you know, you've got this really aggressive pyro who goes for flanks all the time and goes for kills. And, and sir, sometimes you get kills out of it, but uh, I haven't seen too many teams that are really super successful um, team-wise with having a really aggressive pyro. Just because they... Uh, they tend to lose their med a lot. You know, the med doesn't have any spy protection, doesn't have a lot of spam protection, and there is a lot of spam that comes in in these games. So, oh, seems like our spy got caught by some random spam. That is exactly what you want to see coming out of your pyros, just putting flames everywhere, not letting the spy get anywhere nearby. Uh, our blue spy, though, it looks like he is ready to go here, wants to get some kills. Uh, did have to activate the dead ringer. So he'll be re reappearing here in a moment. The scout knows he's there. He wants to go for kind of a stair stab, maybe. No, sir. No, -uh. Wams just says, yeah, "I know your, I know your tricks. Stair stabbing is not going to work on me." It was a good try, though. It was a very good try. And uh, and just in case you were wondering, I'm pretty sure these guys are Europeans. Could reflex going on up there, doing some good damage to the red team. But problem is, Team Mannschaft here. I mean, they they own the point right now. They're bringing the uh, they're bringing the times very close, but they are not getting enough kills. They're not able to. Uh, 
to hold on to this point, I don't think. Maybe, though, it's just that, yeah, look at all the presence by a red team right now on the point. The crits is already popped. Uh, counter crits might be popped. No, Bird is already down, so uh, Blue Team is not going to have that crit screen ready to go. Uh, all the stickies have been detonated, but the problem is now I think our red team will actually get this captured. Nobody's standing on the point for Blue, so it is now 1-2. to two. Equipe versus Mannschaft. And look at that Mannschaft team logo. I love it. It's like a little smiley face. That's exactly what it is. It is nothing else. Don't be rude. You know? Um, not sure why the scout here decided to use that atomizer jump to take a third jump there. He damaged himself, so he's not going to get a... Uh, not going to get... What do you call it? Crit heals. He cannot go into the fight like with 185 health. And that's really what you want to be doing is, is whenever possible, go into the fight with 185 health. Uh, or even more if you can, you know, if, if it's allowed by the league. Because y you turn yourself from, you know, being a, a decently annoying class into a very, very deadly class the more health you have. Uh, a scout with like 200 health almost is a very scary thing to go up against. Because, you know, you know you're not going to hit him for anything. Uh, or even if you do get one hit, he's still going to be dancing around you like a maniac. Um, so it's it's just, you know, the less damage that you take and the more health you have, the better it is for any class, but especially for Scout. So on the on the rollouts, you typically don't want to hurt yourself at all. You want to get those crit heals. So you're jumping out there with the maximum amount of health available to you, and the medic can spread that health around as much as possible. Um, that was the whole point. I rambled a lot. I know. But yeah, so the, what they are telling me in my stream chat is, yes, this is the mentoring tournament. It is EU only. Bird is down right now. A good aggression here by Eagle. He does take down the Medic. And where is that Demo Man? I think, uh, no, he is still alive, but maybe not for much longer. The Caber comes out. Oh, not quite able to hit it. You love seeing that. But no, the Sniper actually pulled out his Pan. Panned Aff into death. And he's doing a pretty good job right now. Walt Disney's Housewives, he's been doing a pretty good job all game, it would seem. And yes, he is top on that scoreboard for his team at the moment. So, uh, you know, if, even if this is kind of a quote-unquote mixed team... Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Are you guys are you hearing this? This, like, clicking sound every so often when I'm talking? It is my microphone. It's, like, bobbing up and down. I don't even know. Pretty crazy. But Walt Disney's Housewives has been doing a very good job on his team here in Highlander, and, I mean, Viaduct is a good map for it. Spots knee, takes him down. Oh, I wish I could do stuff like that. I can't, though. I have terrible aim. Snipers like walk around a corner and they just scope in on me. They they you know they stand still. They get up to 150 or you know 100% charge, whatever it is. Um, they just ruin my day. But accident the pyro taken down right away. The crits not connecting with the demo man here quite enough. But the Equipe did lose a lot of players, so that will be Manshaft taking the game back here into their own hands, controlling their destinies. And where is their um, Rutger? We haven't had a lot of screen time for this guy yet, and he's actually got a stocking full of wonders. Can turn those into scrap metal, and turn that scrap metal into a new gun, perhaps. He's got that Pit Boy from Fallout 3. Excellent little miscellaneous item. He doesn't have a special hat, though. Maybe he just likes the hard hat. I don't know. There you go. Pan Pula finally, I think, has been... Uh, uh, has, has had his game discovered here, because every time he tries to walk up there with like a mini sentry or whatever, that spies on top of him. That's a pretty good thing for the spy to be doing, taking the engineer out whenever possible. Uh, and, oh, he, he's in such a good position right now. He's going to jump down here, go for a stab, go for a stab, but we want to see the stabs. Oh, actually, he doesn't have to. He knows his team's coming in with a uh, crit heavy, and he can just take advantage of this. Oh, goes for the stab, not able to get it. Can use that dead ringer if he needs to. 26 health left. But I think he's using the dinner anyway. Meanwhile, 1024 is actually using the regular Invis Watch. So he does see... Oh! He does see uh, players using that teleporter. And now spots the medic. Not going to go for him right away. Instead, going for just a weird uh, maneuvering route here. And maybe wanted to take out that teleporter. Decided not to. Now he's going to have to cloak up. Like wh The problem is that once you set up a sapper on something, that is going to give away your position. So he had to walk away from that. Um, and cloak up, and that's just going to make him take a lot longer to get anywhere near any kills. Is he getting any kills this game? Uh, he's gotten a few, up to 40 points so far. We just have not been able to spot him doing that yet. He will take down Knee once again, though, and that's an important kill. Uh, he's been consistently on top of that sniper, I think. So 10-24 with the frags, and been spotted out. So that's a problem. Ran out of cloak. The invis watch is so hard to use sometimes. Um, oh, using that dead ringer. And the enemy dispenser to keep himself alive is Precastwig. And look at how slow that dispenser, uh, the uh, dead ringer goes down. I'm sorry, with the um, when you're standing on a dispenser, I think a level three dispenser actually can keep you almost permacloaked with it. 
pretty awesome. Uh, and yes, there were quite a few games. This was a round-robin tournament. People are asking me to cast all of them. Uh, I'm going to cast this one. I'm going to cast the upward one. I think that's all I'm going to do, uh, because I was told which ones were the closest, and it is these two. But uh, there were, of course, games played. I think it was three or four teams, and every team played every other team. So that's, uh, that's kind of how it's going to go. And if you want to play, I mean, uh, most of the fun, of course, in these games is just playing. Getting casted is like the icing on the cake, I would think. Of course, if you're getting casted by Sal, the icing kind of tastes like marzipan, and it sucks. And you're just like, ew! I thought this was going to be good icing. Oh, gross! It's Sal TV icing! Oh, get it away from me! Anyway, uh, Indivisive using that soda popper once again. Coming in after the, the engineer and does take Rutger down. Good kill. We've got Afan now setting up some sticky bombs over on the right-hand side. He wants to try and keep that side locked down as much as possible. they got to take this point back if they want to win the round. Hugs has the crits ready, but uh, Bird's about to have his ready as well. And the crits already coming in for Bird. Very well positioned. They are taking down a lot of players here right now. Hugs down, Carl down. Uh, Afan is still up, but he gets taken out as well by a nice pipe there. So, man, these demo men, uh, they know what they're doing. And they really do enjoy taking their crits as much as possible. Um... There you go. Hugs and, and Bird are both pretty much at the same point now in terms of their scores. Which just means they're both getting a lot of healing and a lot of crits on a lot of uh, assists off of those crits. The Demo Man, though, I'm surprised for Monshaft has been significantly lower scoring than the Demo Man for uh, Equipe. And Equipe must be using that demo for every single crit that they have. Um, Red Team owns the point right now, but they do lose it to Manshaft here temporarily, uh, and it's actually really close to the round end, so there's only going to be one more spawn rave in for the Red Team. Can they get this point back? They need to. They need to push in right now, and I think they realize that there's just not enough time for them to do anything except get on the point, and getting on the point is going to be tough because it's a mini sentry, there's a crit screen ready to go. I think this round is going to go to Manshaft unless something crazy happens. And that's the round. So it's 3-1, to one. and the question is, do they play any more rounds? I think they usually do. Um, no, they don't. They are, in fact, all calling GG. So, that's going to be it. Team Mineshaft wins this map. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, thank you to the Round Robin admins who decided to send me... Uh, the, i, I got to tell you, it's like the world's easiest-to-read list of STV demos I have ever seen. They're, they're organized beautifully. I love them. It's um, not quite as much stats as the ESEA uh Easy hit pages that you get sometimes, but I mean, beautiful stuff, guys, especially for an independent tournament for no money. I'm pretty sure there wasn't any money involved. So, uh, once again, thank you for watching. Do hit subscribe. We've almost hit 10,000. I think overnight we may actually hit it. Um, I'm looking for ideas for a 10,000 subscriber video. I am going to be in Seattle and Vancouver next week, and I'm going to have the opportunity to do some outdoorsman type stuff. Um, I could definitely, I could definitely go for for some jackass style video of myself doing some very stupid things if that is something you're interested in seeing. But if that's not what you're interested in seeing, and if you want to see a video game or whatever instead for 10,000 views, then hey, or 10,000 subscribers, I'm sorry. Just let me know what you want to see. YouTube.com slash FatMop, and I'm going to go on to the next map.